crafters. So earlier this week, uh, we did that review of that Promethium Forge chemical tank platform, which was really, really cool. And they got me thinking, I could really use some more scatter terrain to build a decent chemical plant. So I've been, I had these pieces lying around. I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. So we're actually going to build it this week. So for this project, you're not going to need a lot of stuff. It's about $10 of materials. And you're going to make a ton of these chemical oil slash plasma conduits. Um, they're very simple. You need some glue to put them together or magnets if you want to magnetize them. Um, with glue if you're okay with some static pieces. They're nice and fit so you can actually just kind of stick them together or pull them apart. So you can do that either way. We'll go over a couple different ideas for builds. Um, and uh, we'll come back because these are these are really great, really easy, and they'll look good on the table. So let's hit the table. All right, crafters. So what we're going to be using here is half inch PVC. Uh, this isn't the hot water stuff. This isn't the uh, the pressurized stuff. This isn't the flexible stuff. This is just normal half inch common PVC. Nothing special. Uh, you can get a five foot length of it uh, from most Home Depot stores for like under two bucks. So I got a five foot length and I'm gonna, I wiped it down with good old fashioned isopropyl alcohol just to make sure there's no residue or anything on it. And then we started cutting it up. Now you're gonna cut taste, but I'm gonna tell you what I did. I cut 10 pieces in three inch lengths. And these are gonna be the main lengths of the pipe. Um, I also cut a few connectors, some one inch pieces that'll just fit in between two of the pieces. You see what I mean? There's connector pieces that go on. Um, now, there's a couple ways you can do this. Because this fits so well, because it's designed to fit so well, um, you could just use the simple um, pressure fitting of sticking in a connector. And with the paint and whatnot, it'll go in there and it'll stick and it's not going to move. You're going to have to really crank on it. It'll wear some paint on the edge here eventually. Um, so that's one method of putting them together and that way you can complete modular put your pieces together. Um, I'm going to build for myself a couple different pieces that are going to be set pieces. So most of mine are going to be put together and stay together. I was also messing around with the idea of actually putting magnets inside of each of these, just inside and then taking a small washer and gluing it right to the edge of them and then just being able to butt them up on there and then the magnets to hold it in place. But I just found that that's a lot of effort for what should be just some simple scatter terrain you want to put on your game. So again, this is about ease and inexpensiveness and quick to build. So we got a five foot length that we're cutting up into our pipe. Then we grab some random connectors. I've got some of the T connectors. I've got some of the elbow connectors. I've got some point-to-point -point connectors for two pieces. And then I've got some caps. Um, I also picked up a couple of connectors that uh, go to an expanded size. So I would have some variation in how things look. Now by itself, this is going to be pretty plain, even with paint. So you're just going to put them together and put things on the table. So it's all a matter of making the configurations interesting and then putting some greebly bits on them to make them interesting. So for this, you're going to, if we get a couple pieces together, we're going to come back after we show up, we put a couple pieces together and we're going to grab some connects and some Legos and some granny grating and show how we're going to make these look interesting. So you're going to need your box, of, your box of plastic junk and you're going to need 
some sort of glue or you're just going to be pressure fitting them. I'm going to use a little bit of glue, um, just a little bit of super glue, and that'll make pieces come together. So, things to think about when you're putting this together. Remember, if you have your figures, these are actually for 28 millimeters. These come up to just about shoulder height. So these will be good cover terrain, but they're not really going to be blocking terrain. So it'll be good for, you know, hiding behind and shooting around and moving around. So it's to make your board look interesting. Alternatively, because I'm working on things for my post-apocalyptic game, uh, I'm doing an oil refinery and I'm going to have some set pieces in there using those pieces we made and using some of these. So, getting these pieces to go together. The one inch pieces, when they get put in, you push them all the way in and you push them both pieces on, they should fit flush. If you need to cut them a little smaller, go ahead. Those are just there to connect two pieces together so that you have two of these right up against each other. Um, how to easily cut PVC there's a couple ways. You can get a hacksaw, that'll take a bit. Um, or if you plan on doing a lot of things with PVC, you can get a PVC cutter. I actually use PVC for a lot of different stuff, so these are really handy and it's they they cut through PVC like a sponge. And it's a nice easy thing to cut. So uh, your mods may vary. So let's take a couple pieces just by concept and put them together what we're looking at. So we want to have our basic conduit, which will be coming out of the ground, have a length of pipe, and then have either a T-connector or you could have another L-connector, the other end. Um, one of the reasons we made these small connectors is so we could have, say, a 90 degree turn off of a connector and then we've got a nice contained area. Uh, the nice thing about these connectors, the L's and the T's, the area from the pipe down is the same height. So they're going to lay pretty flat. Um, if you want to have an extra long length of running pipe, especially if you're going upright, which is another thing having these joint connectors will do, take a T-pipe, having it go up, but then you want to put another one here to again give you some stability. And then you can put a pipe running up. And again, if you've got a building you're working with, you can easily wrap things around and really make some nice pieces to go together. So I'm going to just take a couple pieces, slap them together, and uh, we're going to come back and then we're going to talk about detailing. All right, crafters, so here we go. I've made a few pieces here. I've got a small shunt piece. I've got a nice L that's fairly low, just across the ground and a just a straight shot, same thing. I've got a T with an upright, like a stack, uh, and I've got uh, a big L with also a stack. And you notice these are all glued. They're nice and firm, and nice and stable. They look great on the table. Um, so now we're just going to make them look like they're not PVC. So this is where creativity comes in. Now, while we're working on this chemical plant stuff, some of the things I want to point out. Um, if you or anybody you know uses those five-hour energy drinks, these, the bottles they come in, those five-hour energy shots, these are perfect for basically large tanks at a chemical plant. You can just stack a few up and glue them together, or you can leave them upright and just kind of have them lying around. Um, can do some really cool stuff with them that go with this theme. 
um, things to do that I mean things I'm gonna do and we're gonna show it we're gonna we're gonna take some granny grading and we're gonna cover some of these stacks up so like you know be like a filter piece to go over them um, we've got some sprue we're gonna cut some random pieces of sprue to look like uh, handholds or support bars or uh, crossbars on these uh, we also can cut granny grading in squares to make it look like grading that's meant to be walked on on these and then you can cut the sprue uh, like cut a bar and then cut some short pieces to look like a ladder to climb over on it uh, we've also um, I found these in a bargain bin a bunch of connects these are really great you can take these connects uh, these half circle ones and they go really good um, like the side of a joint um, or so they look like they're some sort of supported material so this is this is where you as a crafter get to express your creativity um, drilling a couple small holes and putting in some heavy gauge wire or wrapping one of these in wire to make a little plasma coil taking some Lego pieces like antennas or dishes and putting them on parts like sensor blocks. You just kind of want to break them all up. Glue them on. I'm using gel super glue and get them all greebled up. That's the official term. They use it in Hollywood for when you put stuff on stuff to make it with other stuff. Really technical. Um, but you want to you greeble these up. You want to make them look uh, futuristic or technological and just make them your own but you want to fix them up make them look like something futuristic and weird and great and then you want to paint them and we'll come back when we got ours greebled up and talk about using spray paint and ways to use your paint and your spray paint to make them look good so let's kind of make these make these your own and we'll be back all right, crafters, here we go. Here is our greebled up pieces of PVC. As you can see, we've added a granny grating and some Legos and connects and just broken up those lines so we're not looking at plain old boring PVC. Uh, we took that shunt and put a piece over the grate and put like an antenna on it. I also decided to throw a washer on the bottom, a little heavy washer, just so it was a little bit more stable on the table. And remember, you gotta improvise and adapt and overcome your problems when you're working on projects like this. So, small change like that, and then we've taken care of the issue, and it still fits just fine with the rest of the set. Now, we took that sprue and we created that ladder, nice ramshackle looking piece that was added on there after the fact. But at the same time, I added a nice handle using a Lego, so it looks like it goes with that granny grading platform there. So, this looked really great once we get it all painted up and ready to go. Uh, added that plasma coil, which is just a thick wire wrapped around the ends of the building and glued in place. Took some Legos and made some vents on the ends of a couple of pieces there. And uh, we took that uh, tall shunt there and you know added a platform. Also added this nice antenna piece on the edge there just to give it some interesting lines to work with. So we've got you know a really great set of scatter joints. To go with that, we took those five hour energy bottles. I took six of them and glued them together to make a nice piece of blocking terrain. And put a little sand in the bottom to give them some weight and nice stability on the ground. I also took three or four more and just threw some sand in the bottom to glue the caps in place. And so we just had those tanks that we lined around. And line them up together as a group of three. More blocking or just more scatter terrain in the place of your chemical plant. So at this point, it's all about what are you going to do. Uh, you can prime this and paint this a few ways. Since it's plastic, you're going to want to use like a Krylon type primer. Um, I found a type of Krylon paint that's actually got metal in it, and that's what I'm going to be painting it with to start off with. And give it a quick coat of some matte clear coat after I put the metal on it, uh, because the metal paint itself doesn't always take paint very well, and washes especially just come right off. It's designed to waterproof and protect metal. So. We're going to put some metal spray on it, 
uh, and get it to dry and give it a matte coat. And then when it's done, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about detailing. So uh, we'll be right back. All right, crafters, see what we got here. Silver, matted out, looking pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to add some color and some uh, highlights to them. So uh, the first thought is to break up the monotonous silver is to take some gold or some bronze or other kinds of metallic paints and highlight or change the actual color in certain areas to uh, make it more interesting. So, matter of just picking an item and making it that color. Alright, so you can see here, like I said, we're just taking some pieces and we're going to make some of them gold. Uh, use gold, use copper, use darker metals. Uh, don't be afraid to use. Uh, other effect paints, contrast paints, um, uh, semi-clear, semi-transparent paint, get a metallic finish underneath, but break things up, because we're going to be, we're going to put some color all over this, and then we're going to do some washes to this, so get yourself colored, and uh, we'll come back and do some simple wash. Alright, crafters, we're back, and we're starting the wash process, so I'm making a homemade wash, that is four parts water to two parts of a matte acrylic lacquer to one part acrylic paint and then I use brown acrylic paint and then just use a few dashes of black until you get a nice murky dark brown. And then you're just going to take this wash and you're just going to put it on there liberally like I've done here. Where it's just kind of just coating it and letting it run off. And when you first put it on, it's going to look a lot thicker than it actually is. And that's okay. Because it will run off because of the matte sealant we put on here. So just be prepared to have to clean up your area when you're done. Um, and you just kind of want to liberally coat your stuff to make it look grimy. And that's all I'm going for here. I just want a grimy, old, abandoned, dirty chemical plant. So take your pieces, give them all nice coats, let it run off. After it dries, if you don't think it's grimy enough, give it a second coat. Don't be afraid to make it look nasty. Don't be afraid to do multiple, multiple coats. You want this to look old and weathered and worn. Unless you're not going for that. When you're just trying to go for something simple, I would go then with a thin black wash so you're just pulling out details. But again, because a lot of these on the surface or just a clear, or not clear, a smooth plastic, there's not a lot for it to catch on. That's why we're using the acrylic lacquer. The acrylic lacquer gives it a stickiness so that it clings in a film to the stuff you're putting in it. So take your stuff, make it gross, put your, your wash on it, let it dry. If you don't like it that way, give it another coat. And then take your matte seal and give your stuff another aggressive coat of seal to keep the stickiness from getting anywhere and to lock everything in place and protect your paint job from your table and from the dreaded Dorito fingers of your average gamer, including yourself. And when you've got that all done, we're going to come back and we're going to put these on the table next to some Marines and give you an idea of how these are going to look on your war table. And we will be right back. All right, 
crafters. So here we go. We've got our battlefield set with a group of heroic space wolves, taking on despicable forces of the Death Guard to try and control these highly necessary chemical resources. This is going to be a good battlefield. This is good terrain to break up your line of sights, to make things a little bit harder to traverse around, and uh, if you set up bottles or larger pieces of terrain to really tell a greater story, an epic, your board. The nice thing about these, you can use these in a modern day setting and they'll fit fully in, but at the same time, you put in some of the chemical plant and mechanicus pieces that are produced by companies like Games Workshop. They're going to fit right in and really blend the aesthetic as a chemical plant that's been built and rebuilt and repaired over generations over the long war. So I hope you found this tutorial instructful. I hope you found it useful and I hope it inspires you to go out, grab some everyday items, and figure out better ways to make your board epic. Thanks again everybody. Please like, share, and subscribe. I want to say hi to all my new subscribers and thanks again for coming by. This is Big D. Remember, epic your board and epic your game. Game on.